Hey you guys, how's it going? Desify here. Welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator video. And today we're going to be showing you guys, or I'm going to be showing you how to fly the Cessna 152. And this probably should have been the first video up for my Flight Simulator series, in all honesty. So, who is this video meant for? So basically, this video is going to be for beginners, for new players in the Mic Microsoft Flight Simulator franchise who want to get started out on the Cessna 152 and just want to uh, learn the pure basics of flying because every student pilot starts with a Cessna so if you wanted something basic like to start off with a basic aircraft easy to control um, this would be your aircraft and I'm going to be showing you guys how to get it started uh, how to taxi how to take off and as well as how to land now before we begin you guys keep in mind that uh, I'm using a keyboard to control this aircraft uh, so I'm gonna do my best to you know keep the movements as realistic as possible on my end here but uh, you should not be flying this with a keyboard like if you have a, a yoke or a flight control stick use that but you know uh, the more you practice you, you get used to flying this with a keyboard and it is, it is actually possible because with a Cessna it's actually a light aircraft so it's fairly easy to control but just keep that in mind when you're watching this video so before we start, uh, I'd like to request you guys to always leave a like on this video if you guys are enjoying this series and leave some comments down below, suggestions, feedbacks and whatnot. If you guys have not already, subscribe and join the colony because a lot of my viewers uh, are not subscribed. And if you guys want to join my Discord server, links will be in the description below. It's open to all gamers out there. Alright you guys, without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to be showing you guys is how to get the Cessna started up and running, right? So first we're going to open our checklist here. Uh, this is very useful for newer players in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So have this open and click on before starting engine. And we start there. So fuel shutoff valve needs to be opened. If you guys don't know where it's located, you can click the eye icon and then you'll see it over here. So open that one, needs to be open, so just make sure. Uh, brakes, you need to have a test and set that it's working. Alright, mine is working just fine. And with that, you could uh, you can go to your uh, starting engine checklist over here. So mixture, which is this red knob over here, needs to be set to fully rich. Carburetor heat needs to be uh, cold, which means pushed in. If it's pushed out, right, it's uh, it's on, so it needs to be pushed in. So, engine primers, so we need to prime the engines before flight. So normally, if it's the first flight of the day of this aircraft, you do it like three to four times. Um, I believe this checklist recommends uh, three times, if I'm not mistaken. So we're going to prime it three times. We'll go for it, because it's the first flight of the day. We'll go for it. You know what? We'll just go for it. The throttles need to be a little bit open. So we'll set that to about 5%. And then your master switch, which is over here, needs to be turned on. And then ignition. You could go ahead and set that to start. There you go. Right. Throttle, you need to have it adjusted so that it's uh, spinning at 1000 RPM or less. So where do you where do you find that? Let's, uh, let's go back to our cockpit regular view here. So here's where you find the RPM. You need to have it set that it's spinning at 1000 rounds per minute. So we'll have that set there. I'm just sort of eyeballing this using the keyboard. Don't really have any controls. Okay, that's fine right there. And then you need to switch on your beacons. And that should be it. Then you could uh, proceed to go on your, you know, your other your other checklist here. So before takeoff, your parking brakes need to be set. 
Fuel shutoff valve needs to be open. Blah, 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 blah. Make sure needs to be rich. Below 300 feet. Strobe lights need to be on. Parking brakes need to be released. Blah, 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 blah. But the important thing here, guys, is you do the starting engine, before starting engine checklist, and the starting engine checklist. That's all. The aircraft is pretty much up and running right now. Awesome. So now next, you guys, I want to talk about the different instruments that we are going to be using for flight, right? So we're going to be going through this one by one. The one on the, on the far left here is your airspeed indicator. This one over here is your art of artificial horizon. You may have seen this or something similar on the Airbus A320 that we've been doing on the channel. Uh, basically lets you know how uh, if, you're, if you're in a bank, a, a dive, ascent, or descent... You have your clock over here, your 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 altitude indicator right here, and yeah, so you're it's like a clock system for the altitude indicator. Basically, the big hand represents feet or uh, hundreds, and the small hand represents thousands. So as this uh, the big hand climbs, that will represent hundred, two hundred feet, three hundred feet, four hundred feet, five hundred feet. As the little one climbs, that's going to represent. Uh, the thousands, so 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. I'll show you guys that in a bit. Uh, you got your balance indicator over here, whether the aircraft is uh, balanced or not. Uh, you have your your heading indicator over here, standard. Then you have your RPM, your your engine RPM rounds per minute indicator right here, and your vertical speed indicator over here. Those are the basic instruments that you guys need to know. I'll be talking about like power settings and all that stuff as we as we go on, right? So, what's next from here? Now that we have the aircraft started up, um, we're gonna go ahead and go to our uh, our startup bay or our yeah our run up bay, uh, so that we can move on with the checks of the aircraft. So we're going to release the parking brake right here. Apply a little bit of thrust to get us moving. There is a huge bus in front of us. Not really too sure why that's there. Um, I've never seen a bus in our air in our airport. By the way, you guys, um, the airport that I'm currently am right now is Moorabbin Airport in Melbourne, Australia. This is actually where I conducted my flight training. So for the most part, um, I'm trying to remember the procedures I did during my flight training. It's been five years, so I may have missed like a a step or two. But for the most part, this is you know going to help you. Get it up and running. I don't know why there's a car there, but we're just going to scoot to the side a bit so we don't hit the car. I noticed as well that there were just way too much, uh, too many vehicles here in this area. Like, there's not supposed to be a lot of vehicles, like, or at least not this many. A bit crowded here. Alright, I'm going to push up to the uh, northern run-up bay over here. There is another car. Okay. I don't know why. I've never seen cars in this in, in the run bay, you guys. <laughs> I've, I've, I've just never seen it. Alright. We'll position ourselves here. And then we'll set our parking brake again. Cool. So we have the parking brake set. So at this point in time, you just pretty much want to be um, checking out your aircraft making sure everything is running this is where this is the time you would uh, you would check on your your flight controls make sure you know they're they're working correctly as I'm doing right now then you want to make sure that the engine is uh, the engine uh, is 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 functioning properly by checking out the RPM so we're just gonna apply full power here and watch that increase you want to make sure your oil temperature gauges oops are moving we shouldn't be moving not full power my apologies I think it was something like 2000 if I could remember correctly just to make sure everything is good so sorry about that but uh, now now you have to check your oil temperatures make sure they're in the green uh, oil pressure is in the green right over here. So those are your uh, temperature gauges right there. 
And once it's smooth, you want to bring the power back down to 1000 RPM. And just set that. And pretty much once you've run all your tracks here, now it's time to request our takeoff clearance from air traffic controller. So we're going to go ahead and contact Murab and Ground. And we are going to remain in pattern. Ground Cessna Alpha Sierra X Ray Golf Sierra with Charlie request taxi for take on touch and go. So essentially, we're going to be doing a circuit for our flight here. And when you when you select remain and pattern, that means you're just going to be going around the airport for a touch and go. Okay, so basically, uh, the active runway that we are using, let's hold short of runway 1331 right, is the, is the runway we are using. I don't want to use 31 right though. Select another runway for takeoff. 31 left. Is that all they're giving me? I don't want to use 31. You know what? Um, let's acknowledge a taxi clearance. Short runway tree one right using taxiway golf Charlie Alpha cross runway one seven right Alpha cross runway four Alpha Bravo Cessna X ray golf Sierra. Okay, I don't want to really use three one, but um, they're making us use three one. Um, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> anyway, once you get your taxi clearance and uh, and your airport, now it's actually time to get the aircraft moving. So the runway I'm going to be using for demonstration purposes of this video, we're not going to use 3.1. I just wanted to show like the new players, you know, how to request for like your taxi clearance from air traffic control. But I'm not going to be using 3.1 because I don't want to use that runway. I don't really feel like it. And um, we're going to be using runway 17 left is what we're going to be using. Which is normally the active runway here in Morabin on a daily basis. We only get like runway 3-1 or something if if there are like crosswinds. Uh, it's very rare that we actually use runway 3-1. And I don't know, I just don't like using that runway. It's a little bit small. Um, and yeah, I just I just don't like I don't like I don't like using it. There's a lot of taxi instructions on how to get there and stuff. Uh, I'm not gonna dive into that in this video, but we're going to use 17 left for demonstration purposes. And we'll probably have air traffic controller come back to us and say you weren't cleared for takeoff and, and, sh and stuff like that. But uh, did, did we cancel? I can't remember if we, if we canceled our landing instructions. I think we did. Whatever. We're probably going to get flagged for it. But, um, I don't care. This is just <laughs> to sh basically show you guys, uh, how to get this uh, aircraft up and running and how to fly it, right? It doesn't need to be super duper accurate, but I mean, if you want, you could be accurate and follow the instructions of ATC, but I'm not going to do that. I thought they were going to give us runway 17, which is what it is. All right. So right about here, you see that yellow line in front of us? That is our holding point. We're not allowed to cross that line unless we receive our takeoff clearance from air, air traffic control or Morabin Tower. So at this point in time, what I would normally be doing is um, I'd be contacting Morabin Tower and requesting VFR takeoff like this. And um, Morabin Tower, Cessna Alpha, Sierra, X-ray, Golf Sierra, and runway three one right, ready for takeoff, touch and go. I can't believe it's actually clearing me for takeoff at the wrong runway. That's insane. Okay, cool. Acknowledge. Cleared for takeoff runway three one right Cessna X ray Golf Sierra. Okay, we were cleared for uh, takeoff on runway three one, but we are actually in runway one seven uh, left. Uh, because that's the runway I wanna, <laughs> I wanted, I wanted to fly in. But um, hey, it worked, and they actually cleared us for takeoff, knowing well that I'm in the wrong runway. They could see us from the tower. Good job, Microsoft. Anyway, 
Now we just push the uh, throttle to full speed. And make sure that our airspeed is increasing, oil temperatures and, temp and pressures are in the green. And we're going to rotate at around 60 knots. Once we are airborne, we want to be basically min try to maintain. We want to try to maintain our runway heading. And uh, the rate of climb that you want is about, about 700 feet per minute. Um, how we were taught is to just, you know, point your nose over here at the, hori uh, in the hor horizon that you see in front of you. And that should give you your uh, perfect angle of climb or angle of attack. So at 500 feet, you want to turn to your crosswind position. Which in our case is uh, generally somewhere... We, we took off in the southern direction, so we want to be flying east. And we're just going to ac acknowledge the clearance they gave us. Yep, we're good. I always make sure you see the runway. Then once we reach a thousand feet, we're going to level off the aircraft because we conduct circuits at a thousand feet or circuit patterns at a thousand feet. I'm going to try my best to keep this at a thousand. It's really difficult with a, with a keyboard. Then we're going to turn to our downwind position over here. Uh, we want to be heading at around uh, north position or a little bit like a 350 position for our downwind leg here. Right there. Decrease the throttle a bit. Right, so you should have your airport or the runway in mind or that runway you're going to land into your left. I'm just trying to get the aircraft stable. It's kind of hard to control using a keyboard like I said. But try your best to fly at a thousand feet, get the aircraft nose down if you can. And again, runway should be to your left, which it is. And before you make your base turn, you guys, what you want to be doing is you want to be slowing down the aircraft, right? Before you turn to your base position, I'm going to bring the RPM back to about uh, 1,900 or so. It's a bit laggy here. That's all right. It's probably loading up the buildings and stuff. So I want to bring it to about 1,900 RPM and get our speed uh, cut back before we turn to our base, right? And uh, during my training, uh, this area over here, this sandy air area over... Oh, my God. To the left here is normally my indication when to turn to base. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it right about here, starting to descend to about 800 feet. 800 feet generally is what you want to be at for your base position. I'll bring the power back down. We want about 80 knots before we start deploying our flaps. So I'm looking for about a... Uh, I'm looking for a western direction for our base turn over here. And once you have that uh, covered, when you look to your left, you should have the airport in, uh, to your left-hand side. Although, there we go. Moved my head down a bit. So we have the airport over here you can see. Bring it to a higher angle here. And we basically want a 70 knot approach for our final approach. I'm going to be, I'm going to start to turn to our final approach and then I'm going to deploy two stages of flaps here. And we should see the runway come in front of us. Well, we're a little bit off to our left, so we're going to keep flying this uh, position. I'm going to increase my airspeed just a little bit. We're dropping below 70. We want 70 knots for our final approach speed. Just play around with the, the power and like get a feel for it, right? Try to maintain 70 knots as best as you can. So now we're increasing. I'm going to cut the power back just a little bit. And then we're going to slowly turn off to our final approach here. Runway 17 left is to our left hand side slightly off so 
So our speed is cutting back. I'm just gonna apply some power. We're a little bit high as well. So basically, for landing in these types of air airports, you want to aim for the uh, for the uh, white piano keys over there as your landing point. Do your best to keep the, keep your aircraft in the center line. Obviously, we're a bit too high over here, so I'm gonna put the push the nose down. Try to gather some airspeed. Try to maintain runway center line. Again, in my case over here, it's a little bit difficult because I'm using a keyboard. But uh, if you have a flight stick, this should be a lot easier for you. As we come down over here, I have the throttles on idle. We're just going to bring the nose up slowly for a smooth touchdown. Right there. There you go. And try your best to maintain runway center line as you do so. And we have been acknowledged to switch to ground. Uh, we're probably going to do so. Acknowledge. And there you guys have it. Pretty much that is how you fly a Cessna 152, you guys. The, and just, you know, a simple circuit pattern around the airport. Circuit traffic around the airport. So again, uh, this, should be, this should be perfect for you uh, beginner flyers out there. Pretty simple to do. And yeah, if you're using a keyboard, it is possible to land this thing. But again, it's um, it will take some practice. Don't expect uh, to get it, you know, to get it perfect on the first couple of tries. It will take some practice. But you know, if the more you practice, you'll get the hang of it. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys did enjoy this video and found it informative. If you guys did, don't forget to leave a like, comments, suggestions, and feedbacks down below. Much appreciated. And if you guys have not already, subscribe and join the colony. Once again, you guys, take care, and we'll catch you in the next video.